Hi, everybody. Joey Calzone here. Today's topic on Hoop It Up, the NCAA tournament. And um, if you remember last week, I picked um, the winner of the 2016 National Championship Tournament. I, I had St. Mary's uh, winning the National Championship. Well, I can tell you even before the first round begins, that is not going to happen because St. Mary's didn't even get into the field of 68, which happens every year. It's cool. Uh, you know, teams get snubbed. You know, ones that are supposed to get in don't, and then the ones that shouldn't get in do. I get it. There's 300 plus Division I programs, and only 68 teams get into the field. So, what, 80 percent maybe of Division I programs don't make the big dance. So I'm good with it. Happens. You know, you get over it. Tournament play starts Thursday, and you forget all about that stuff. But there is one team in particular I'm about to go on a rant about. And there are many that didn't get in that should have, but there's one team in particular that didn't get in that really ticks me off. And there's no other way to describe it, but they got screwed. And that is Monmouth. And I know, not an original take. Everybody's talking about how the Hawks got hosed and all that stuff, but I figure I'll, I'll come to the party and give my take on this. And this is the reason why. I've actually covered the Mac for years, Siena in Albany specifically, and I've seen Monmouth play a couple of times this year. And I know their bench, it's cute. They do stuff, you know. Um, but they actually are a really good basketball team and got hosed this year by the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. And here's why. 27 wins. MAC regular season championship. And they made it to the MAC championship game. Now, I know they lost to Iona, but they lost to the Gales by three. And Iona has an NBA player in A.J. English. Watch. They're a good team. They're a good team. Now, I know what you're saying. Dude, really? A rant about a team that didn't win their conference tournament championship? They're the MAC. They're a mid-major school. And you want to pontificate about why they should have got in and why they got hosed? Yes. Because the Hawks did what the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee tells every mid-major to do every year, especially if they feel like they got hosed the year before. And that is, you want to get treated like the big boys, then schedule your non-conference schedule with some big boys. And guess what? They did. Go look. USC, who's in the NCAA Tournament, they beat them. Notre Dame, ranked 17th in the country. They're in the tourney. Beat them. UCLA, now I know. Not your daddy's Bruins, but they beat them. Georgetown, I know, not your daddy's Hoyas, but beat them. What else are they supposed to do? They scheduled up and got punished for it. Like, why do it? If you're a mid-major and you watch what happened to Monmouth this year, why would you even consider, besides the check, and they get paid handsomely for those non-conference games, but why would you even do that to your players? You know, you sit there and you preach to them early practices. Look at the schedule we have. Guys, if we can win maybe two of these four, we got a chance to maybe be an at-large bid if we don't win our conference championship. And they didn't. So stop telling these mid-majors, schedule up and then you'll get in. Just tell them the truth. We don't want you in the NCAA tournament. So if you're lucky enough to win your conference tournament championship, I guess we got to let you in. But if you don't, just tell them that. Be honest. And then at least those mid-majors know. Okay, well, then what's the point? Why are we going to schedule? USC, Notre Dame, Georgetown, UCLA. Doesn't matter. They got hosed. And now they're playing in the NIT. That's cute. But there's no doubt in my mind, Monmouth should have been in the field of 68. Okay, now the rant's over. Some predictions. And I think we know based on my pick last week how great I am at that. Two opening round matchups to watch. One's going to be a prediction, and then one is just keep an eye on it for the intrigue. They're both 13 versus fours, by the way. Um, 13th seeded Iona taking on fourth seeded Iowa State. Iona moving on to the second round. Book it. I'm telling you right now. I know it's normally that 12 versus five, but this is going to be a 13 versus four. Iona going to be Iowa State. And then the other 13 versus four is another team I'm pretty familiar with because I covered the America East, and that is Stony Brook, the Seawolves. Finally getting out of the America East Championship game with a win. They will take on fourth-seeded Kentucky. And the reason why this is so intriguing is because Jamel Werney for the Seawolves, he's a guy that people in our neck of the woods, the Northeast, the America East, he's a guy that we've been following for the last two, three years, and he's clearly been the best player in the conference. He just hasn't had that opportunity to show it on a national stage, and he's going to get that chance to do that against the Wildcats, who they've got two or three NBA guys 
every single year. People are talking about Warney as a potential NBA guy. So just out of intrigue, that's one you might want to watch. And I think it's a game that is competitive early. And then the Wildcats, just like I said, they've got three or four potential NBA guys on their roster. And then I think they pull away late. Now, final four picks. I'm sure you're on the edge of your seat because I'm so good at this. Um, I'm going to go chalk with half the field, Kansas, UNC, and then the other half of the final four, second seeded Michigan State. Okay, I know, going way out on a limb with that one as well. Uh, Tom Izzo, just one of the more underrated coaches. I mean, since 1995, no other coach has led his team to the final four more. Seven final four appearances for the Spartans under Izzo, and then the defending national champs, Duke. I know they're 23 and 10, and they haven't had the year that most maybe thought they would, and they're a fourth seed. But, I mean, you look at the bracket that they're in. Oregon's the top seed in that bracket. Outside of that, you got Oklahoma, who's the number two seed. I mean, if Duke shoots the ball well, they have enough talent to get to the Final Four. So that's my Final Four right there. Two top seeds, UNC Kansas, Duke as a four, Michigan State as a number two. And my winner of the national championship, the Spartans of Michigan State. I, you know, you could go Kansas, but they always seem to disappoint. UNC, I know they're a top seed, but uh, I'm going to go Michigan State. I like the Spartans to win the national championship. And two more things before we get out of here. Number one, go like us on Facebook. I mean, if you haven't already liked us on Facebook, I don't know what's wrong with you, but go do it now if you know what's good. Just kidding. And number two, the most important thing, obviously you love the NCAA tournament and you like money. We got an opportunity for you to enjoy both. Go to hoopitup.com, go find the brackets, make your picks. If you win, you win a $250 gift card. You go buy whatever your heart desires. I mean, come on, who loves you? Joey Calzone loves you. That's going to do it for this edition of Hoop It Up. Thanks for watching. Good luck in the NCAA tournament. Happy March Madness, everybody.